Amen. We thank God for our praise and worship team, our dancers, our praise dancers. At this time, let us receive the Solomon Temple Anointed Inspirational Mass Choir.
excited about Jesus? I said, are y'all excited about Jesus? Are y'all excited about our bishop and first lady? Are we thankful that God put them in our lives? Touch your neighbor and say, I put it all in his hands. Now you got to say it like you mean it and believe it when you say it. Say it again. I put it all in his hands.
listen, listen. Everybody got some hell they going through right about now in their life. The devil is working on everybody's nerves. He didn't want you to make it today. But you made it. So whatever problems you're going through, the songwriter say, take it to the altar and leave it right there. So when we say whatever, wherever you're standing, I just want you to come down, throw your problems at the altar, and go back believing God that it's already done. Is that all right? Here we go. Whatever, whatever. in all thy ways acknowledge God and he will do what we need to give it to Jesus and leave it with him can you say amen join him as we pray this morning somebody need to give it to Jesus this morning God said I brought you here he said but I want you to leave the stuff here and be free when you leave father we love you we thank you now for all things and we repent of all of our sins blood on our transgressions help us oh god in such a time as this for we need your help we need your mercy we need your grace as never before you see god the violence on every hand you see the killing on every hand but god i know whatever's happening in the natural is also happening in the spiritual and so we said god our minds and give us a stand to make a stand help us to make a stand for you God against the work of the devil against the work of the enemy you can't have my family you can't have my soul you can't have my inheritance I stand against you in Jesus name and we thank you Lord we are above and not beneath that we the heads and not the tail 
that God we are the lenders and not the borrowers and God we stand in a place representing you you told us that we're the light of the world and you said we're the salt of the earth then we take our rightful place as princes as kings down here and bind the enemy in the name of Jesus pulling down every stronghold that will come against the church and against the family of God that will come against our city we pull it down now we pull down violence we pull down killing we pull down kidnapping we pull down sin in the name of Jesus but let your blood God let your blood cover us let it cover our city let it cover our neighborhood and we'll thank you for it and we'll praise you for it anything we ask in faith you said you would do it God and as we stand in agreement now it's already done it's already done I'm not asking for victory I'm standing in victory I'm standing in faith I'm standing in deliverance I'm standing in abundance in the name of Jesus and we give you the glory for it and we give you the praise for it and it's done right now in Jesus name clap your hands and praise God because you are standing in that place where God has ordained for you to stand hallelujah you're standing already in the victory that God has given you hallelujah bless your name God bless your name bless your name Jesus hallelujah praise God you may be seated hallelujah yeah. ay, 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 ay. you may be seated if you can but I feel the power of the Holy Ghost I feel the Holy Ghost moving up in here Something about to catch fire here. Hallelujah. Bless your name, God. Thank you for the victory. We are walking in. Tell my neighbor, say, I'm walking. I'm walking in victory. That makes the devil mad because he thought, he thought I'm trying. No, I'm walking. I ain't trying to get victory. I am victorious. I am triumph. According to the word of the living God. Hallelujah. So I praise God for the truth and the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank God. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And the church say hallelujah. We praise God. We thank God for every one of you. We appreciate you being. If you're a visitor, just raise your hand. Let's see how our visitors raise your hand. All visitors, just raise your hand. Give God a praise for our visitors. Give God a praise for the visitors. Can you say amen? And you that are streaming, we want to encourage you. MyVideoMinistry.com backslash Jane underscore Holloway. God bless the streamers. Give God a praise for the streamers. Can you say amen? All the way in Hawaii, in Texas, in Tennessee, in Arkansas. Can you say amen? Thank God for you tuning in. And this is a great day for you because the Lord has made this day. And any day the Lord has made, it is a great day. Can you say amen? Praise God. We want to tell you what we're going to be reading this morning, and then we want to have uh, a, a testimony from a sister who had a head-on collision, but she's still here to tell the story. I want you to say amen. Praise God. And then I have to say something concerning God is warning the saints. And uh, we need not take it lightly. And God is warning us. Because if there be any trouble, if there be anything going on in the city, God can make it known to the prophets. And so when God makes something known, he wants us to be aware of it and share with the body of believers. So hey, guess what? We're going to be the first one to know it. Won't you say amen? We'll be talking with that. I'm going to talk to First Lady and Sister Jackson and uh, Sister Prather. Can you say amen? Uh, Sister Wright has a testimony. I want her to come and have a seat up here. Praise God. We want to go, we're going to tell you what we're going to be reading this morning. We're reading the book of St. Matthew, chapter 22, and verse 29. Praise God. St. Matthew 22, and verse 29. Our main thought going to be in St. Matthew 16, chapter, verse 1, down to verse 4. In St. Luke 12, 54, and 59. I'm reading these and you can read them on your own some more because it's important that you understand people don't know the scripture and when you don't know the scripture 
your defenses against an enemy who's well versed in scripture and then don't know the power too many ain't got no holy ghost you're really gonna be in trouble in the book of saint mark 8 and 11 and then first corinthians chapter 1 verse 21 down to verse 24. i may mention uh, this later and you can get a chance to write it down ephesians 5 16 and second timothy 3 and 1. now we'll come to genesis chapter 6 talking about noah in conclusion can you say amen Praise God. Look at someone and say, know my word. Praise God. And that's your sign. And they were asking, give us a sign. Give us a sign. Jesus said, know my word. That's your sign. Can you say amen? Because a lot of times folks are getting deceived because they're asking, show me a sign, God. You should be saying, Lord, give me your word. Because in your word is all the signs I need. Won't you say amen? Uh, all right, Sister Wright is coming, and we're going to get a testimony. We're praying for Sister, also Sister Felicia Miller. We're praying for Sister Wes Whitlock. We're praying for Sister Lewis. Praise God. We're praying for uh, Mother Liner. And we call their name out before God so God would touch them. Can you say amen? Sister Lewis is here. Where is Sister Lewis? Give us a hand. Give God a prayer for Sister Lewis. God bless her. Thank God for you. Glad to see you here. And letting you know the saints been praying. We've been praying for real. We ain't talk about praying. We've been praying. And so we're going to need much prayer as we look at into the script today because it's not going to be, we're not, you may not jump on this one today. Can you say amen? Amen. Because God is real serious about people coming to themselves and understanding we see the signs of the time. When you saw a sin with God and told you in the scripture, God is showing you it ain't no time to play. Come on, sister. Praise God. Stand right here, if you will. What's your name? Cassandra. Right. Sister Wright, what happened to you? Share just briefly. We won't be able to give it long, but share what happened to you and how God delivered you. Uh, I was headed home um, a couple of weeks ago, and um, I was making a left, and a man hit me head on. He tore my car like totally up. I was okay and my daughter was okay and the man, he was okay as well. And my daughter, she kept saying, Mom, um, what's going on with our car? How are we going to get another car? I said, we got to thank God for our life. And I told her, you know, this is why we pray every morning. You know, I've used the oil on them. I pray over them and ask God to protect us and he did. And it was a lady there she came over, she hugged me, and she told me, you know, you okay? And before I got up to, you know, look for her, she was gone. Yeah. And I was like, where was, where, where the happened to this lady? You know, and I don't know where she came from. I don't, I didn't see her car or anything. She just came from out of the blue. She hugged me, and she was like, you're okay. And she was gone. And I, and I looked up, I said, Lord, what is my calling? Because I'm still here. Because I could have been dead. My baby could have been gone. And that man. So. I just thank God for my life. Give God a prayer for Sister Wright and her life. Oh, we know who was the woman. Can you say amen? Look at somebody say, we know who the woman was. <laughs> Angels come and they show up at times. Can you say amen? Praise God. Give me, I have an envelope up there on my briefcase. Give me an envelope up there on top. I got, a, got some prayer cloths in it. And I want to give this to... Uh, 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 did I give it to you, Brother Humphrey? Did I give you a prayer cloth? I'm going to give you, I'm going to make sure you get it. Praise God, give it to me. And I just want one out of there. Lord, these are the prayer cloths that God gave me a time when I told, when he told me to dismount on my robe. And so I don't put it to everybody, but I'm going to give it to you, son. Because God is on you, God's with you, and God is for you. You wear this on you, wherever you go, you wear it on you. Somebody said, praise God. That's going to be your protection against the wiles of the devil. <laughs> Oh, bless his name. Sister Pray that uh, in the Bible class came and had something to say. Well, I think we were in the minister's group, praise God. And she shared some things just briefly, uh, you know, about some things that was happening. And God told her to share it. And so we're going to hear it. And then God, there was Sister Jackson down there in California. And God dealt my own wife in a dream. And God may have dealt with some of you. You just ain't told nobody, praise God. But if God is telling us something and warning us, it is time to take heed to it 
and understand, amen, this whole city, this whole nation is under attack. All right, what did the Lord show you, Sister Prather? Well, Bishop, it was in the wee hours of the morning. God showed me I was on the phone, and I was calling different ones, and I was calling them to make sure that they were safe. I was calling them to make sure that they had shelter. I was calling them to make sure that they had water. And I said, God, well, it doesn't really take a rocket scientist to let me know that something is coming upon the land. And we, as the people of God, we must be prepared because we are going to have to help others that's not prepared because they don't hear the voice of God. They don't know God's voice. So we are the people that are going to have to help them. So God is saying that we need to get ready. We need to get our water stocked. We need to have flashlights. We need to have batteries. We need to have things that we can access without electricity because we're going to need it. Amen. Give God a praise for that. <laughs> Sister Jackson, who's our administrator, something happened down in California to show you what we're saying today, how important it is that the people of God be prepared. We can jump and shout all day, but you're, gonna, you're living in the real world and reality, and there's some things you're going to have to do to survive. All right, Sister Jackson. Bishop, I wanted to tell you that uh, a couple of weeks ago, my sister called us and she said, we need your prayers uh, here in California. I was like, well, what's going on? She said, well, they cut out water off in San Bernardino County and some of the other counties. And I said, well, why are they doing it? She said, we have a shortage of water here. So therefore, we have a deadline when we can use water, at what time we can use water. And if they catch us using the water, then they would, you know, ticket us and, and give us a ticket and a fine. And so their water has already been limited. And I didn't know that Sister uh, Pratha had the stream. And it's amazing that it's happening in another city already. Then last night she called us and she said, they told us we, our lights will be out. All of the lights in the San Bernardino uh, ben County and Riverside, California, lights were completely out until 8 o'clock last night. And so they you had to do whatever they needed to do, you know, in advance because no one had electricity in both of those counties. And they deliberately turned them off. And I asked, I said, well, what did they tell you guys? He said, they went from door to door saying, we're trying to save energy. And we're sorry, but we're going to have to turn everybody's electricity off. And so it's already happening. All right. So this is just a warning. The pastor wanted us to talk to you guys about it because she had the dream. This happening, the dream that she had is happening in California. Amen. So we got to be prepared. And pastor spoke to us some time ago. And some of those of you that have been here for a long period of time, when he had us together water, gather flashlights, gather certain things, and, and he told us that these times were coming, and it's here today. So may God bless us all. Give God a praise for that. <laughs> praise God. First Lady, you want to say something? Because she dreamed a dream, and, uh, and, and uh, she is a prophetess in her own right in this ministry in the body of Christ. And uh, she began to share about darkness. You want to share? Yes, I was... Uh, dreaming one night and sister Irma Johnson was at my house and we were talking and doing some things around the house and uh, we were getting ready to go out of the house through the garage and it was a dark cloud that began to come over and when we looked up at the sky it was covering the entire sky and I said oh sister Johnson we got to get out of here and so uh, I said we got to get some water let's at least take some water with us and when I opened up my refrigerator, there was only one bottle of water. And I said, well, that's all right. We'll share this. And we fled out the house. Praise God. Give God a praise for that. <laughs> out of the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. And so we're saying to the people of God and those that are hearing, those that are listening, those that are streaming, it is time to make sure you build up your water supply. Can you say amen? Praise God. And because what? You got to cook with water. You got to bathe with water. A lot of things you got to do with water. Food, sometimes you make it miss. And miss it a couple of days and maybe fast and get through it. But you got to have water. You got to have water. So I encourage you as a people of God and those that are listening, do not take this lightly. I mean, just because it hasn't happened here, that don't mean it won't happen. And a prepared people is a people that is not frightened. They're not scared because they know they prepare to do what they have to do. Can you say amen? Praise God. Let's go, if we will, amen, to the word of God this morning. We're going to read our mission first, then we go to the word. Our mission is to exalt the only begotten Son of God, which is Jesus Christ, our Lord, 
to reach out to every man spiritually, physically, emotionally, and educationally, regardless of race, creed, or color, and share the love of the Holy Father and redemptive work on the cross until his future return to earth in power and glory. Can you say amen? Praise God. It's important that we understand that God is, the Bible tells us he's coming back, and he's really going to come back. And the people of God are the only one that God is warning us. Now, the world knows something's going to take place, but they don't know exactly what. But we know through the scripture that Jesus is coming back. And all that we see that's happening is happening, leading for him to come back here. We're going to be reading, if we will, in the book of St. Matthew. I think I said 22 and 29. And then we're going to St. Matthew 16, 1 through 4. And I, I encourage you to take notes write down if you will praise God and go over it again don't take it lightly amen because the Lord is speaking to us amen through the word of God this morning as as usual but he wants us to take heed to it and not just you know put it off well that's just another message well when you go finally wake up and realize you can be here and still don't have ears to hear you can be here sitting right here and don't have eyes to see it is God who reveals and open knowledge to wisdom and knowledge. It's God who open up your ears to hear and your heart to receive. Read what it says uh, at, at St. Uh, Matthew 22 and 29. Jesus answered and said unto them. And Jesus answered and said unto them. Ye do err. He said you do error. Not knowing the scriptures. He said you error because you don't know the scriptures. Praise God. I'm not saying just quoting scriptures I said know them knowing them then they're part of you it's your life man should not live by bread alone but by every word the word of God is our life we live by it we trust it amen we wait upon it we know God will comfort us through the word read nor the power of God he said there are two things you ever not knowing the scriptures and then not knowing the power of God because the Holy Ghost is the power you got to have to sustain yourself in such a time as this. We're living, if you want, it will admit to something, we're living in perilous time. Yes, sir, we're living in dangerous time. Praise God. And God has spared us and God has spared our children and God has watched over our children when people in the same neighborhood are getting shot. People mind their own business in their bedroom getting shot. Can you say amen? There is a killer. There's a demon loose. But God, amen, is going to protect the people of God, but he wants us to be aware, amen, how important it is for us to be in Jesus. In the book of St. Matthew, chapter 16, verse 1, down to verse 4, and the church folks, amen, are here were asking questions, amen, and the religious leaders or something else when they're not Holy Ghost feel. You got to understand religious folks are dangerous people without really being spirit filled because then they're only going on after the letter and not after the spirit of the living God. For the Bible says, and the letter kill it. But it's the spirit that gives life. And so here in this passage of scripture, amen. Now the Pharisees, the Sadducees, or, or religious groups, they don't even get along. They, they don't want to believe in angels, don't believe in angels. But when it comes to Jesus, they teamed up on it. Isn't that like the devil? You folks on your job, amen. You mind your own bitch, you live and save all you know. Amen. But if they want to team, if they want to get you out, they team up on you. They'll set things, amen, to set traps for you to get you out of there. But how I many as long as God is with you, he'll make sure the devil can't do you no harm. Read what it says here because we're gonna see now when it talks about. Amen. The Pharisee asking for a sign. They tell him, we want a sign. Read. The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came. Mm -hmm. And tempting desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. And they were tempting him. And they wanted Jesus to show them a sign. They understood enough about scripture that if a sign would come, they knew demonic spirits could show signs. They understood that. And they said, well, if it's, if it's a sign coming from heaven, then we can accept that what you're saying is true. But they were tempting him and causing him to want to show a sign when he said, I've given you my word. Read. And he, he answered and said unto them, uh -huh. When it is evening, ye say, it will be fair weather. 
for the right for the sky is red. And he, he began to deal with them on a level where they knew because the biblical, the uh, biblical schools that they had there uh, made a point of them teaching them about weather lore. And so they already, Jesus knew that this is what they were doing and a part of their culture. So he did something that they could identify with. Jesus is always going to do something to make you identify with whatever situation is so he can bring about a truth. Can you say amen? Ask him, read it one more time. When it is evening. He said, when it's evening. Ye say. He said, you say. It will be fair weather. It's going to be fair weather. For the sky is red. And the sky is red. He said, you said it. He said, because you're looking at the weather and you're saying right away, the weather's going to be, we looked at it this morning and said, oh, it's going to be a good day today. Did we say it? Ain't no clouds. It's a bright day. Can you say amen? <laughs> Read what it said. And in the morning. And in the morning. It will be fall weather today. And be a fall weather today. For the sky is red and lowering. Uh-huh. Oh, ye hypocrites. He called them hypocrites. He said, because you really don't want to know about the signs. You want to tempt me. You really don't want to know the truth. You just want to put up a smoke screen. Won't you say amen? Read. Ye can deserve the fact of the sky. He said here you can discern about the weather, about the sky. He said, but you can't discern about the time in which we live in. Read. But, ye, but can ye not discern the signs of this time? He said, you can not discern. And we're living in a time now, folks, do you not know people so concerned about everything else and they cannot discern what time it is that we're living in. And we're living in the last days. And God has shows in the book of Matthew chapter 24, it talks about it. I remain one or two scriptures there. Amen. But God is talking about the times of violence. He talks about wars and rumors of wars. He talks about famine. And all these things he talked about, we're seeing them escalating as never before. And the church cannot be sleep. The church has got to be awoke and understand that we need to make a stand not only with our lifestyle and not compromise what we say we believe. Come on, church. If you're in the body of Christ, if you're really in Christ, there is no compromise when it comes to holiness and comes to righteousness. Can you say amen? The Bible said, I believe, it, in the, when Daniel and them went through, the, Daniel said to the king, Oh, king, live forever. He said, but we would not be careful to answer you in this matter. Amen, because uh, the God we serve is alive and he will deliver us. But we will not bow down to you. In other words, you got to come to a place in your life, you make a stand that you ain't bound to nothing but Jesus. Won't you say amen? Praise God. And those who are hypocrites, who, those who are acting and, and want to and wanna fit in with other folks, you ain't going to be no good to Jesus. You're going to have to make a stand. You're either, you either hot or you cold. God can't stand lukewarm folks and lukewarm spirit. One moment, you're all right with this group, but if somebody influenced you, you're all right with that group. Listen, when are you going to make a stand? When the church is going to make a stand that God said, holiness is still right, sanctification is still right, and God is not compromising, he's not having sin operating in the church of the living God. If we have a problem, come to the altar. Let's get it right. Can you say amen? Read what it says. A wicked and adulterous generation. And then God, he called them a wicked an adulterous generation where they wicked and they're committing adultery. And that's what happened to what happened in the beginning in the book of Genesis. God said there was so much adultery going on that God said, I gotta do something about this. The whole earth was full of adultery. Folks fool around with somebody else's husband, somebody else's wife. God said, I'm tired of it. And God said, I'm about to kill them all. Can they say amen? I'm gonna really clean a clean house. Now, God will clean house. I don't care how you, what you think about it. God's going to clean the house because he created us. And he has a right to clean the house when there's filthiness in the house. Read. Seeking after a son. And they're seeking after, he said, they wicked. Generation of adultery. He said, and they got enough nerve to be seeking after a son. And thus shall no sign be given unto it. And God said, I'm not giving no sign to him. But the sign of the prophet Jonah. The only sign I'm going to give him is what happened to Jonah. And he left them and departed. And the Bible said he left them standing, asking, will he give us a sign? 
He said, the only sign I'm giving is Jonah. Jonah had a sign. The only sign Jonah had was to preach the gospel to Nineveh. And, and, and if you read and understand in the book of Nineveh, they were some wicked people. Let me, let me, let me describe here. They were some wicked folks. They burned people alive. They put people on poles and killed them. They did all type of things in Nineveh because the Bible said every man did what he wanted to do. And any time you let a culture or you let a nation do, it, do whatever they want to do without any restraint, you ain't going to have nothing but wickedness. But because God knew there was no king, there was no prophet, there was no preacher in Nineveh, God had to do something for them because God still loved souls. So he called Jonah to go and preach, and Jonah didn't want to go and preach because Jonah knew that God would forgive them if they repented. But God had to have mercy on them because God said, amen, in the book of Jonah chapter 4, I believe, and verse 11, he said, they have no discernment between right and wrong. So I've got to send you, and if they hear you, I can change my mind about it. When folks have no discernment between right and wrong, they have no morals. We live in a generation that have no morals. They're not afraid of nothing. They'll do anything. They'll say anything because they have no training. But you know what? God will still save them if they repent. God will still have mercy on them if they repent. Can you say amen? Read in the book. Where are you now? In the book of St. Luke chapter 12, verse 54 and verse 59. And he said also to the people. And he said also to the people. When you see a cloud rise out of the west, mm -hmm. straightway you say. What do you say? There cometh the a shower. Oh, there come a shower today. Don't we say it? Oh, it like rain today. Come on here. And some of the older folk got arthritis. Said my ankle hurting so bad. It's going to be some rain today. Can you say amen? So there's all kind of warnings of the weather. Read. So it is. So it is, he says. And when ye see the south wind blow. And when you see the south wind blow. Ye say. And you say. There will be heat. And it cometh to pass. And it's going to be a heat today. It's going to be a heat wave. And God said he brings to pass. If we can discern about the weather, how much more should we discern what time we're living in? Can you say amen? Praise God. We got folks. Uh, we got people who give now seven-day forecasts. Hmm? Seven days. Just seven days, you know, for seven days, what's the weather going to be like? Then on the, on what's the other one? The cell phone? The cell phone, you can do almost 30 days of what it's going to be like. How to dress, where to go. Come on, church. And still can't discern what time we're living in. The Bible said in the book of Genesis, and I'll get there in a moment, and they were marrying and giving in marriage, and they were having a good time. And he said, and while they were doing all of that, God said, and then the rain came. And God said, then it was too late because Noah preached for 700 years. He didn't preach for seven days. He didn't preach for seven months. He preached 700 years. That it's going to rain. And they say he's got to be a crazy man. But when the rain came and he on the Mount, uh, of, uh, Mount Iraq, in, which is in Turkey, they found a portion of the boat. They cannot deny that the Bible is right. Can they say amen? And they found a portion of the Noah boat. And they just were so amazed. But God ain't never amazed. God knows what he's doing. And the Bible said, and, and, when, and when they put it up there, God put it up there on purpose so he knew that when it start raining and you're on a mountaintop, when it start raining, guess what? It become a mudslide. And you can't come up the hill. I don't care if you want to come up. God ain't going to let you. Because once you throw going up a, a hill that's already wet, guess what? You can keep sliding back like a backslider. Mm, mm, mm. Read the book. Ye hypocrites. He called them again, you hypocrites. You can discern the face of the sky. You can discern the face of of the sky and of the earth and you can say the earth this is that but how is it that how, we do not discern this time but how is it he said you are spiritually blind that you can't discern what time it is 
If it ever been a time to pray, it is the time. If it's ever been a time to fast, it's the time. If it's ever been a time to witness to your loved ones and tell them that it's going to rain for real and things are going to happen, now is the time. There's no time to be playing church. There's no time to be pretending that you saved. There's no time pretending amen, that you all well with God. It's time now to say, Lord, make sure I'm right with you. I want to make sure I'm in right standard with you. And if repenting, if it take repenting every day, I'm going to repent. If it takes come to the altar, I'm coming to the altar. Whatever it takes, God, to make sure we're in right standard, we need to make sure we do it now. Read. Yay. Yay. And why even of yourself uh-huh. judging not what is right? Uh-huh. When thou, when thou goest with thy adversary to the magistrate, yes. as thou art in the way, mm-hmm. give diligence that thou mayest be delivered from him. Uh-huh. Lest he hate thee, lest he hail thee to the judge. Uh-huh. And the judge deliver thee to the officer. And I was, have wisdom what to say. Don't say anything without asking God, get hold of my speech. Give me what to say. Read. And the officer cast thee into prison. Uh-huh. I tell thee, thou shalt not depart then till thou hast paid the very last mic. And God said, I'm not. And here he said, you're not going to be delivered from the prison. You're going to go through it. And if you owe something, you're going to go through it. We live in a time now, and this is why, this is why God has been telling me some time ago, tell the saints, get out of debt. Tell the saints to get out of debt. And the more I say, the more folk get in debt. Get out of debt because once you're in debt, the system owns you. And the system will dictate to you what you can have, what you can't have. In the scripture dealing with Elijah the prophet, the Bible said, the woman said, uh, my husband died and I became a widow. And she said, I could not pay my debt. So they came to collect and they said, well, you can't pay, give us your son. And your sons will pay the debt. We'll put them to work, and they'll pay off the debt. God is saying, you got to understand, our children are precious. And we don't need our children coming under that type of bondage because we lack wisdom. Read what it says. Say more. In the book of St. Mark 8 and 11. And the Pharisees came forth uh-huh. and began to question with him. And begin to question him. Seeking of him a sign from heaven. And we want a sign from heaven. Tempting him. Uh-huh. Tempting him. And if God show a sign, would you still believe it? If God showed us a sign, would we change the way we think? If God showed you a sign, would you change your direction and your attitude if God really showed you one? In the book of Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 6, then 2 Timothy 3, 1, and I'll be through in the book of Genesis, we're going to be through. Can you say amen? Know my word. That's your sign. Look at somebody and say, know my word, that's your sign. Read. Ephesians 5 and 6. Let no man deceive you with vain words. The Bible says here, because we're living in the last times, do not let people deceive you. He said, men, don't let nobody deceive you. If you really save and feel and you see what time it is, don't let people tell you, it's all right. It's going to be all right. It, I'm going to for it. It ain't going to be all right, y'all. Because we have not seen what it's going to be. We have not seen how terrible the day of the Lord can be. We have not seen what famine is. Some of us don't know what famine is. Some of you don't know what it is to be hungry. Some of us, I'm talking about hunger. I ain't talking about just because you didn't get no sandwich. Amen. Yeah, because you didn't get no Burger King. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about when you can't get nothing to eat. The Bible said the Old Testament, it came, a time came with a city that the, there was a siege against the city. And in that city, the Bible said, because there was no food to eat, they began to eat their own children. And even some of them ate their own dung. You think we're not living in such a time that because if the water's cut off, if the lights are cut off, cut off what are you going to do? What are we going to do as a people? What are we going to do as a country? What are we going to do as a city? Can you say amen? Read. For because of these things, and because of these things, cometh the wrath of God, and cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. And of the children of what? Disobedient, disobedient children. The wrath comes upon them. Praise God. Now a whole country, a whole nation is in trouble. Let me tell you real quick. A whole nation is in trouble. 
when they passed the law for homosexuality, for men with men and women with women, it brought a curse, not only on our nation, but every city that agreed to that mess. Can they say amen? Now, God will save a homosexual. God will save a lesbian. But God is not going to condone it. And God is not going to promote it. Can you say amen? Because God said, I gave them male and female. They are to reproduce and multiply. He said, but ain't no same sex going to have no multiplication because I'm not in that. Can you say amen? Why do you think God told Noah, when you get on the boat, get two of everything? Get two chickens. Get two cows, a male and a female. It may get whatever, but they got to be a male and a female. Now, if God said that, and you ought to understand that, you know good and well God's not accepting this. I don't care what church is accepting it. I don't care what bishop is accepting it. I don't care who's saying it's all right. God says it's an abomination in my sight. Lift your hands and praise God. I'm not saying they can't get delivered because you can. But I'm saying that God is not promoting it. God is not promoting that type of spirit. God's not going to promote it. He ain't going to never promote it. I don't care how, it look, how good it looks. I don't care who all accepting it. Because they got on TV now like everybody's all right. Everybody's happy. Talking about gay. You ain't just gay. Does not not mean you happy. Praise God. And, they act, and, and what they're doing, subtly the Satan, what he's doing, he's infiltrating the TV. Mm-hmm. So he can make you think they're all right. They ain't all right, church. I think I saw Martin, Martin modern family or somebody just look I say, oh what is that they feel trading it so you can say oh they are right sin is never all right if adultery is not all right if fornication is not all right amen is if, if incest is not all right fooling with little baby is not all right then God said homosexual and lesbian is not all right read it's still sin read in the book of 2 Timothy 3 and 1. This know also. This he said know also. That in the last days. In the last days. Perilous times shall come. Dangerous times are here. You can't walk to the store. You can't trust your child on the bus. You got to make sure who is the teacher dealing with your baby. You got to watch out now for folks in your own family. Come on, church. You used to leave with uncle. You can't leave with uncle no more. You used to leave with grandmama. You got to check out grandmama now. Can they say amen? Because there's such a spirit that's loose in the earth. And any time you're not saving, feel Satan is taking folks at will captive and causing them to commit all type of lustful sin. In, in Noah's time, was two things was really prevalent. It was, it was the sexual lust and it was violence. They were doing so much in Noah time. God said, I got to do something. I can't let this go on like this. Read. In the book of Genesis chapter 6, verse 5, verse 6, verse 11, verse 13, verse 16. Bishop, I just don't. Why you got to do all that reading the word? I know where you come from. I know what's in you. Can you say amen? Because the real saints love the word. The real saints want to hear what the word is saying because they want to make sure they're not in error. But folks who don't really care about God, don't care about holiness, they say, I don't think we need all them scriptures. You do error. Not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. And yet we tell you, take notes, you sit like, Amen. You got it all together like you got a photographic memory, like you can remember everything I'm here to tell you. Soon this service will some of you will forget everything I say. If the Holy Ghost don't bring it back to your remembrance, you'll forget everything we said. And then Satan said, I got you now. It's because you heard it, but you didn't do nothing about it. Read what it says in the book of Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 and verse 6. This and, is what it says. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And God saw that the wickedness was great in the earth. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil. And God said, I see the imagination of men. Getting up in the morning, imagine evil. During the day, imagine evil. Going to bed, imagine evil. Just got a memory of just doing evil. Not trying to do good, but doing evil. And God said, I got to do something about this. Read. 
was only evil continually. And God said it was only evil continually. No, it was round the clock evil. Round the clock violence. Round the clock doing stuff that was contrary to the word of God. Read. And it repented the Lord. And by said it repented God. That he had made man on the earth. And God said it repented that I made man on the earth. Not because I don't love him, but because I gave him a free will to choose between right and wrong. And he has chosen to go wrong. And Satan has used man because man don't understand born in sin, shaped in iniquity. You know, you, know, you know very little about spiritual things, and that's why the enemy can keep on in the natural sense, but you got to be born again to understand spiritual things. Even though you look around the congregation of people, hey, man, I got new for you, that's not the real you. How you like that? The real you live on the inside. Can you say amen? What you see is just the outward shell be our tabernacle can you say man that one day gonna die gonna rot but the real you gonna come forth out of that read and it, was, and it grieved him at his heart and it grieved God at heart now you want to grieve God keep on doing wrong and don't repent it grieves God because God has created us to be the head and not to tail to be above and not beneath God has created us to have dominion and power over this planet over the animals and everything else and it grieves God because sin will separate us from God and the power that we're supposed to have read verse 11 verse 11 and the earth also was corrupt and by said and the earth was what corrupt and when the earth become corrupt we see it now it won't produce can't even get can't even get food from the earth no more. Got to get artificial food. Got to get clone food now. Got to try to do something else because the earth won't produce. Even the earth saying I won't produce. Matter of fact, the earth saying I want to throw them all up. I'm gonna throw them up. Can they say, man, volcanoes, earthquakes is only gonna throw us up. God said, Earth said, I rebel against what they're doing. Read. The earth also was corrupt before God. Uh huh. And the earth was filled with violence. And God said the earth was filled with violence. Just every hand. We can't go without a mourning that somebody just got killed. I don't even listen to it no more. We can't even get up in the morning without somebody got shot. Some of us have relatives sitting here have got wounded and shot we can't hardly amen get up in the morning just say good morning to somebody without hearing bad news taking place on planet earth because men will not repent our government not president all of them if the leaders would repent god would have mercy but they're too hard hearted and too greedy won't control everything and that's why is open the door for Satan, the Antichrist, to come in because he know now I can have one government. Let him keep on killing. I have one government. I have one church. Amen. I have one thing to control everybody. Why do you think now they want you to get the chip and the chip is in the car because Satan know now I can keep up with him. Ain't nobody, he said, the great and the small will have to stand before the enemy. Nobody going to be ex exempt from it. And that's why you got to make sure that you seal by the Holy Ghost. Because Satan want to mark you. Lucifer, amen, cannot be as God being everywhere. He can only be a certain place at a certain time. That's why he must use the system to control, the system to know what's going on, the system to bring people to bondage because he can't be God. But God can be everywhere at the same time. Won't you say Amen. God can speak to all of us in a different way, but he can speak to everybody at the same time. That's the kind of God we serve. Read. Verse 13. Verse 13. And God said unto Noah. And, and then God said to Noah. The end of all flesh is coming. And, and God me. said, now the end has come off. And God said, Noah, you are a, a man of righteousness. You are a preacher. You ain't the only preacher, but you're the preacher in this generation, your generation, that declared my word. You to preach in the generation that that declare who I was, and you live something with your family. Won't you say Amen? And so God said, "I'm gonna use you." Now you gotta realize that the boat itself was a gigantic boat, over seventy some thousand animals could be on it, but only eight people, human beings, was on it. 
only eight people were saved in the first world. That does not say much for the church. It does not say much for the people of God. It does not say much for, amen, uh, uh, ministries. If only eight folks are saved in the first world, I wonder, Lord, how many are going to be saved in this time? The Bible said men love darkness more than they love the light. We see it every day, amen. Folk make all kinds of excuses why they can't come and worship, why they can't come and pray, why they can't come and seek the face of God. But amen, you do all of that, and God give you a free will to come. But Lucifer or the world itself will say, you going to work, and guess what? You're going. My leg hurt, Bishop. I can't be here. And then the next day, they call and say, you got to come to work. Give me a cast. I'm going on to work. Y'all ain't got to say nothing. Who do you serve? Who do you fear the most? You got to understand that God's the one taking care of us. Our life is in his hands. Our breath is in his hands. Our whole future is in the hand of God and not in the hands of men. Read. For the earth is filled with violence. For the Bible said the earth now was then at time full with violence. Through them. And through them. And behold, uh -huh. I will destroy them. And God said, I have to destroy what I have created. It breaks my heart. It grieves me. But God said, I can't stand sin. May I tell you, God still can't stand sin. Read. I will destroy them. And I will destroy them. With the earth. And God said, I'm going to let the earth be the thing that destroy them. I'm going to use the very thing they live on. The very thing they in is going to destroy them. And may I say, too, that the earth itself underneath is nothing but a deep pit. In the center of our earth is a deep hole. They've showed it and proved it. Amen. That's a deep hole. And when, if the earth opens up, there is no place to go but down. There was a movie show some years ago about St. Louis. There was a big old black hole and folk were falling in like flies. I thought, God, have mercy on us. We hear the word of God and then still don't believe it. Read. Uh, 16 or 17. Go to 17 and we'll be through. 16 and 17. A window that shall, a window shall thou make to the ark. Uh-huh. And in a cubit shall thou finish it above. Yes. And the door of the ark shall thou set in the side thereof. Yes. With lower, uh -huh. second, Third story shall thou make it. Yes. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth. And God said, I'm doing it. I'm releasing the flood on them. I'm opening up the deep. We, what's it, uh, tsunami, what is that? Tsunami ain't nothing. To compare what God let happen to them. And thank God he left a covenant of a rainbow in the sky and told us I never do that again when God when every time you see a rainbow in the sky don't be deceived by some pot of gold at the end that's foolishness God left that rainbow in the sky to remind us that I never let water come on earth to destroy it again but I kind of questioned God for I said Lord that's something I said that thing is something else I said you Folks are dying like I don't know what people are being drowned, babies being lost. Can you say, I man, folks laying out, uh, swole, busted wide open. And that's just a small thing that's going to take place on planet Earth while we're still playing church. Then told us to pray and we won't pray. Then told us to fast and we won't fast. Read. I even I do bring a flood of waters upon the earth uh -huh. to destroy all flesh. Yes. Wherein is the breath of life? Uh huh. From under heaven. Yes. And everything that is in the earth. And everything that's in the earth shall die. Shall die. And God's word is true. And God kept his word because everything died but Noah and those people on the boat and the animals. Can you say amen? And, and, and it was, got a little bad on the boat because now the boat represents, the ark represents Jesus. It represents safety. And as long as you're in Jesus, you can be kept. Going to church ain't going to save you. Getting baptized in water ain't going to save you. What's going to save you if you're in Christ? 
and your name been written down on the Lamb book, and you are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, and you're walking in holiness as God has ordained. Holiness is not some denomination. Holiness is a lifestyle we must live. In other words, God said, I want you to live a clean life. He said, I help because I know you can't live it by yourself. He said, but if you let me live in you, I'll live a holy life. Lift your hands and praise God. Know my word. And not what I said, and not what? He said, know my word, that's your sign. Know my word and know me. Because God said, if you know my word, you're going to know me. If you know my word, you're going to have fellowship with me. If you know my word, you're going to be subject to me and be willing to submit to me. Even though if you get wrong, you can repent and say, God, I'm sorry. Pray, but God said, you must know my word. Won't you say amen? Praise God. The Bible speaks of a young man that was rich. The Bible said he was rich and had so much money, he knew what to do with it. He was so rich that he said, I decided one day I'm going to tear down all my bones and I'm going to build new bones. Praise God. And it was all right because when you have that kind of power, you should do it. But he said one thing he shouldn't have said out of his mouth when he said, oh, so take it easy. Because God began to speak to me immediately when he said, so God got involved. And God said, amen, when you said soul, he said, all souls are mine. Who are you talking about? Your soul going to take it easy. Can you say amen? Don't you know your soul don't belong to you? Don't you know in this life, all that we have, God has given to us. And the only thing you have that's going to be lasting is your soul. Your house going to fade away. Your clothes going to fade away. Your children, everything going to fade away. Only thing going to last is the soul of men. And that's why God is so concerned about the body of Christ that men and women get to the place, if I don't get no house, my soul is saved. If I don't get no job, my soul is saved. If I don't have my name called, amen, if I ain't got no, my name's in life, my soul is saved. It's important that the people God know, are you saved today? Are you saved in Jesus? Do you have the Holy Ghost? Or are you going through a form of formality? And if we're not saved, we need to tell God, save me today. Don't let me walk out of here not saved. Don't let me walk out of here, amen, not feel the Holy Ghost, knowing that the day of the Lord is coming, and it will not be a pretty day. Lift your hands and praise God. Now, we ain't going to shout. Ain't nothing to shout about when we're going to get it right. Can you say amen? He said, no, my word. He said, that's your sign. Stop saying, Lord, give me a sign. God said, no, my word. Then you'll know what I'm talking about. Young folks, God wants you to be saved too. Young people, I got time. You ain't got no time as you think you got time. He said, the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Because you can be well today. All of us can be well today. And tomorrow can't walk. Well today and tomorrow can't speak. Well today, amen, and be paralyzed and not able to do anything for yourself. And somebody have to wait on you. So while you have your health, while you have your strength, while you have a sound mind, it behooves all of us. And Lord, have your way in my life. I surrender myself to you. Lift your hands and praise God. It's not a scare tactic. It's a reality check. Where do you stand with God at this moment? Where do you stand with your relationship with God? Where do you stand in the fellowship with Jesus Christ? Or are you just going to church out of ritual, coming to hear and then leave the same way? Or are you coming telling God, I need to change? You got the power to make me change. If I want to change, you will help me to change. But God, I want to change. This morning, we were ready to pray. Uh, you know, I ain't going to ask for a few people. I need all of us to come to the altar this morning. Can you say amen? Everybody need to come to the altar. Everybody. Preachers, deacons, songwriters, come to the altar. We need to pray for one another. We need to pray for one another. And said, Lord, keep me, keep me. I want to be kept. Women, hold on to your purses, though. The, the thief still come, but to still kill and destroy. Can you say, man, uh, bless his name. You can hold your purse. You still can pray. Hold your purse. Somebody said, praise the Lord. Somebody said, praise the Lord. I didn't come to hear this. I thought you were going to talk about 
Daniel. I thought you were going to talk about jumping over the wall. But today God said, this is a reality check for the body of believers. We all stand in need of Jesus. I don't care how much save you are, we all see more of Jesus. And if we don't preach the truth, if we don't tell you the truth, then the blood is on our hands. And we must realize that we can't have you doing anything in the body of Christ, in a position, and you ain't trying to live saved. Come on, church. You're going to have to be saved according to the scripture. Not according to what Pastor Holloway said, according to the scripture. Old things are, and behold, all things have become new. Old things being the self we used to do. The thing, the place we used to go. Somebody had enough nerve to say, well, preacher, what you mean old thing? Now, you, you should know what old things is. You know good and well what you used to do. And you know, you said, Lord, now I, I don't do those things no more. And I thank you for helping me because, Lord, if you hadn't helped me, I'd still be doing them. Can you say amen? God has washed us. When he, got, when he saved us, he washed us in his blood. Listen here, Jesus is precious. The Holy Ghost is precious. And if you have it, you don't know how blessed you are to have the Holy Ghost when so many in this world don't have it. When so many folks that walk on the street don't even know, have no hope. Don't even know where they're going to lay their head down at night. And God done told us, amen, foxes have holes and birds have nests. And the Solomon had no place to lay his head. He said, but I will supply a need for my people. He said, I'll make a way. Because when God called us a chosen generation, he said, we are a new species. That's why we can't act like the world, can't do like the world, do what the world do. Because God said, what I put in you, I made you a new species through the nature of my word in you. You don't belong to you. We're not trying to play church. We want to be saved. We're not trying to be religious. We want to be saved. Saved means being changed. Every day we're changing. Come on. How many know every day you're changing? Every time you pray, you're changing. Every time you repent, you're changing. Every time you say yes to God, you're changing. You're changing from your old man to the new man in Christ. Father, we thank you. We all stand, God. I'm at the altar first. I'm the pastor. I'm at the altar first. We all stand, God, needing your help, needing your deliverance. We see the time now. We see the time coming. We see the hour upon us. And God, help the people, God, to be sober in their mind. Help them have their mind made up, God, for God they live and for God they die. For, Lord, we know, God, the Antichrist will not be playing. The man of sin will not play. He has no mercy in him whatsoever. But, God, you having mercy on us, and we thank you for mercy. We thank you for grace. We thank you for helping us with all our little pity patty stuff, with all of our hidden sin, with all of our little trouble. Help us and deliver us. Save us the more, God. Fill us some more with the Holy Ghost. Break the hand of the enemy. Bind the demons that would hinder us. But let us rise up, God, and be a witness for you in this hour and this time. Help us is our prayer. Save us is our prayer. Deliver is our prayer. Deliver our family is our prayer. Don't let a one be lost, God. If we stand in the gap as a believer, you will save them. You said you hear the prayers of the righteous. And if the righteous pray, you can save the son. You can save the daughter. You can save the husband. You can save the uncle. You can save anybody if the prayers of the righteous are going up. But we can't compromise with sin. I know that's your son, but you can't compromise with sin. He'll never get delivered as long as you compromise with him. As long as you pet him, amen, and keep on feeding him, he'll never get delivered. That's why God said, give it to me, I'll save him. We're just petting folks, and we know they're wrong. Feeding them, and you know they're wrong. When you go finally wake up and say, Lord, help me not to pet them no more, but help me to put them in your hand, because I want to see them saved. I want to see them delivered, God. If I had the power, I would deliver them. But I can't deliver them. So I got to trust you to deliver them and set them free. Lift your hands and praise God at the altar. Open your mouth and talk to God for yourself. Open your mouth and talk to God for you. Can you say amen? Can't nobody talk for you but you. 
Can't nobody say anything for God but you. Can't nobody, amen, keep on interceding for you. You got to open your mouth and tell God, I want you more than life itself. I want to be saved in the end. The race is not given to the swift nor the strong, but he that endured to the end. Help me to endure until the end. Help me to be faithful to the end. Help me to stand until the end. God, hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Help us, God. We are people that need your help. We are a church that needs your help. We're not pretending we save and all of that. We just need your help. You said you'd be a present help in the time of trouble. Break every yoke now. Break every chain now. Break every lustful spirit now. Break every habit now. Bind every proud spirit now. Bind everything that's hindered our life that calls us not to serve you with all of our heart. Loose us and set us free. For we realize, Lord, you are our help. You are our God and nobody else, God. When that day come, every man going to be running for themselves. And God, if we don't know you, where can we go? You are our hiding place. You are our refuge. You are our strength. You are everything, God. You told us not to trust in flesh, not to trust in man. He said, but put our trust in you. Because you won't never let us down. So I pray that you help us today. I pray that we open our mouth and begin to say, God, I'm sorry for every sin I've committed, every sin I thought, every attitude I had, every rebellion I had. God, I repent of it in the name of Jesus. Anything I said about somebody that was wrong, I repent of it. I want my life to be pleasing in your sight. I don't want nothing to hinder me, God, from going back with you. Because as sure as we stand here, there's going to come a day that you said, God, all the dead in Christ going to get up. And when we hear the sound of the trumpet, the dead going to get up. And we which remain shall be caught up to be with you in the air, God. We don't want nothing to hinder us to be caught up with you. We want to be ready when you come. Things are happening on earth for, for a reason, for a purpose, to draw us to you. You don't want to scare us, but to draw us to you. Trouble only come to draw us to you. Affliction only come to draw us to you. Sadness only come to draw us to you. Being broke does nothing but draw us to you. You want us to come to you. You have the answer. You have the cure. You have what it takes to take us through this thing, God. Grab a neighbor hand. We get ready to pray and go. We get ready to receive our tithes now, but we're going to pray. Grab a neighbor hand. Your sister, you don't know your brother. You don't know what they're going through. You don't know what somebody's facing. They look good. They look all right, but you don't know what they're going through on the inside. And if God don't help them, someone will commit suicide. Some will kill themselves because of the pressure. Because they're going through pressure in this life. Financial pressure. Family pressure, job pressure. God, touch now as we stand in agreement. Strengthen my brother, my sister in righteousness. Strengthen them, God, in holiness. Strengthen them in their faith. Let them not fall but stand. Let them not go astray but stand in you. Let them not give up but let them stand up in you. In the name of Jesus, give strength now. Give strength to the body. Give strength to the body, God. Give strength to our mind. God, I thank you now. You got the power to do it. You got to know how to do it. You said with two is touching the green on earth on the same thing. You said you would do it. So do it for us. Bind the devil. Bind the works of darkness. Bind the enemy and loose him from our life, from our home, from our family, God. Set us free now in the name of Jesus. And we thank you now. Now, if you lift your voice, everybody, everybody, just lift your voice to God and begin to worship God in your own way. Come on, make a noise. Make a noise before. Make a noise before God. Honorable. Hey, hey. Yes, God. Honorable shout. My God, yes to your will. Help us to know your word. Help us to know you, Jesus, through your word. And the power there. Thank you. Thank you for hearing us. Thank you for hearing us. Thank you for hearing us. I came in one way, but I'm going on another. Thank you for hearing us. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Lord. We bless your name up in here. We bless the name of Jesus. We bless the name of Jesus. We bless the only name whereby men must be saved, and that is the name of Jesus. We bless your name. Help us now as we repent. Help us not to go out the same way, but go out with a mind to serve. Go out with a mind to obey. Go out with a mind uh, to tell somebody about Jesus. We thank you down. As you return, as you return back to your seat, just give God the praise for it. The glory belongs to him. Come on, give God the praise as you go back to your seat. As you go back thanking him, give God the praise. It is God who knows what to say at a time, what to do when we need help the most. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Bless your name, Jesus. Wonderful Savior. Wonderful Savior. My soul says yes. Yes. Yes, my Lord, my soul says yes. Yeah, my soul says yes. Yes, yes, my Lord, my soul says yes. Yeah, my soul says yes. Yes, yes, my Lord, my soul says yes. Yeah, in the morning, yes. Yes, yes, my Lord, in the morning, yes. Yeah. My soul says yes, 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 my Lord, my soul says yes, yeah, in the morning, yes, 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 my Lord, in the morning, yes, yeah, yeah, and the church say amen, our soul says yes to the true and living God, and when you tell him yes, God know how to break every chain, break every habit, break every generation of curse. And all he wants you to do, my soul says yes, 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 my Lord, my soul says yes, yeah, my soul says yes, 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 my Lord, my soul says yes, yeah, yeah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. We get ready to go. We praise God for you. I don't know about you, but I enjoyed the word. It hurt. It cut. But he'll heal me while I'm saying yes. I said he'll heal you while you're saying yes. I know you're bleeding. I know you're hurting. But I know one thing, if you tell him yes, he'll heal the scar. He'll heal the wound. He'll prepare you for greater things. Hallelujah. My soul says yes, yes, my Lord, my soul says yes, yeah, yeah. My soul, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, my soul, yes, Lord, you know I want to say yes, yes, Lord, help me to say yes, yes, Lord. Help me to say yes. 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 Yes, Lord. Oh, yeah. Yes, Lord. Oh, yeah. Yes, Lord. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, Lord. Yes to your will. Yes, Lord. Yes to your way. Yes, Lord. I will surely. Yes, Lord. I'll obey. Bless your name, God. Bless the name of the Lord. I enjoy God because his word is true. And he's warning the saints and warning us, be prepared. The day of the Lord is coming. And things going to happen on planet Earth that we have no control over. But you can be safe in Jesus if you save and sanctify. Holy Ghost feel. Can you say amen? We praise God for you. We get ready to go this morning. We thank God for every one of you. Thank you for those that have helped with the radio ministry. But I need your help always in the radio ministry. I need some of you at least, if I can get 20 of you to sow a seed of $10, 
it helps us in the radio ministry. Okay, and this Sunday is pastoral service, so God bless you. you want to bless